Welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport for another F1 pre uh, sorry, review video. Uh, this week we're going to be discussing the uh, Imola Grand Prix or the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola where F1 celebrated the 30th uh, anniversary of um, Ayrton Senna, the legends, uh, unfortunate passing back in 94. Um, yeah, before we get into the results and stuff, let's just quickly talk about the unbelievable um, gift that we got given to see um, Sebastian Vettel step back into the car, uh, but not only a car, a very special car, uh, Ayrton Senna's McLaren, uh, which he would have raced around uh, Imola. It was pretty cool to see, he even wore like a Brazilian flag slash his helmet race suit and also hosted a uh, a run on the Wednesday before the race weekend, I believe it was, uh, with all the drivers who ran, cycled, scooted. I think that was uh, all the options. Majority of them ran, um, but uh, Lewis Hamilton jumped on his uh, scooter, e-scooter. Uh, Charles Leclerc rode a mountain bike, and Valtteri <laughs> uh, Bottas dressed up in full lycra and went all in. And um, had himself a bit of a ride around the track. As I get myself lit up there a little bit. It, yeah, yeah, also rained during that uh, walk, as my co-host Daniel um, has just mentioned. Um, yeah, overall, the whole weekend was, I'd say, fairly interesting. Um, it was it mixed up the grid a fair bit, I, w I would say. Obviously, we still had the usual suspect winning the race in Max Verstappen. Um, who has tied the qualifying record held by the legend Ayrton Senna, uh, which is eight consecutive pole positions. Um, I am a look at me a little bit biased here, and I, I kind of hope he doesn't get pole in Monaco, just so Ayrton can keep that record. Um, never know; it will be broken one year. Who knows? Probably by, probably by Max next week, but uh, for Ayrton's sake, I'm kind of hoping. That does not happen. Anyway, uh, yeah, speaking of qualifying, it was a bit of a mixed session. Um, the gap between Red Bull and their next best competitor, which is usually Ferrari or McLaren, um, was very close. McLaren only qualified less than a tenth of a second, both of them, behind uh, Max Verstappen. And it was actually Oscar Piastri who got P2. However, he had a uh, three, three place grid penalty. For impeding, I believe it was Kevin Magnussen in qualifying, uh, which bumped him down to a starting position of P5, which boosted up Norris, Leclerc, and uh, Carlos Sainz. This made the race pretty interesting because uh, obviously it would be a bit more interesting if uh, Piastri was on the front row. However, uh, McLaren was still pretty. Not dominant, but you know, keeping up with the Red Bull as Lando Norris uh, held the rein for McLaren and made the race very interesting toward the end. And we'll go into that in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, the reason for that was, that, I'll be honest, the race wasn't too entertaining. I'll be pretty blunt about that. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't many fireworks at the beginning. Um, yeah, you know... I wasn't really impressed. I was looking a little bit tired actually watching the race. Um, a few offs here and there. Obviously, um, we saw Perez go off. He had a really rough weekend as well. Um, yeah, quite a talking point actually. Um, considering that, uh, you know, Max had pole and won again. And Sergio Perez once, once again proving that he's not up to the standards. Um, but yeah, this weekend it really showed he had a crash in FP3, I believe, hitting the wall at the chicane. And then in the race, had an off. He's, uh, he qualified actually 11th. Um, last of all the Red Bull drivers, including Yuki Tsunoda and Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, he did make up some places in the race, despite that off I just mentioned. Um, finishing in 8th position. 
he probably could have been a bit higher. He had the alternative strategy. A lot of the drivers started on the medium tyres and he started on the hards, uh, went longer on the first stint and then uh, yeah, he was down to like 12th or something after the pit stop and then yeah, went all the way back up to P8. Um, we'll go through the list in a second, but it was didn't take until about lap 50 odd out of the 63, I believe it was, uh, where the action started to heat up. Uh, there wasn't a momentary momentary battle with uh, Norris and Leclerc for P2, uh, but that kind of died down once the uh, lap traffic got out of the way. Uh, Norris was able to uh, make a gap to uh, Charles Leclerc and never saw him again. Uh, there was a battle as well with Oscar Piastri and Carlos Sainz fighting for fourth. Piastri eventually winning that, but it took him absolutely ages to pass the Ferrari despite having the better pace, as we said, they only qualified uh, less than a tenth behind Max Verstappen the previous day. Um, Mercedes had a bit of a eh weekend, nothing to really speak of. Uh, Lewis had a bit of an off in one of the practice sessions, nothing to report. Russell was there. Yeah, Mercedes had a bit of a eh weekend, so nothing to really report there. And yeah, besides that, the usual suspects had their battles. Uh, we did see RB perform really well in qualifying with Sonoda 7th and Ricardo 9th. However, that pace did not show on race day. Uh, Sonoda was still able to get a point, literally, um, finishing 10th. But Daniel Ricardo did not. He had uh, no pace at all. It was also a weekend to forget for Williams. Um, they had an absolute shocker. Uh, Alex Albon... I believe had an, uh, an incident causing a red flag. Oh, didn't have an incident, had an issue with the car causing a red flag in FP1. I uh, just had a comment here from Dan, I believe, not Daniel the guy, someone else, who's asking about the Monaco and who I think is going to win. Who I think is going to win is probably Verstappen. Who I want to win would be Norris or Piastri. And I believe Piastri has the possibility to do so. I think you're going to have a bit of extra power with that center livery, which Daniel, my co host, has asked about. Um, yeah, we'll get into that in, in a minute with uh, that news that came out today with the new um, with the new uh, livery that they're going to run for this weekend. Uh, Dan's also asking off related about the Chas Mostert penalty. I look any contact that involves cars in the pit lane deserves a penalty. So yeah, unfortunately, who knows. <coughs> Another comment coming in, uh, do you reckon Ricardo will improve? I hope so, as an Aussie. Um, I really do hope so. He deserves to still be in F1 um, as a person, you know. Got pretty mistreated uh, at McLaren, unfortunately. And then, um, yeah, since leaving Red Bull, it's been a disaster. So hopefully he can get back into some points finishing because he, uh, yeah, really deserves it. Anyway, let's go through the results for the Imola race. So obviously we had Verstappen win. Norris almost won, I'll be honest. If he had a lap extra, maximum two, he would have won. Um, late in the race, Verstappen wasn't doing well on his hard tyres, uh, while Norris was. He was absolutely flying. He caught uh, Verstappen, well, didn't catch him, was about to catch him. Obviously, he had, if he had one more lap to go. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, couldn't get the pass, but still very confident signs that, you know, you won in Miami uh, on pace and strategy, lots of strategy, and a bit of luck with the safety car, um, but seeing them this weekend, like I said, they were less than a tenth behind Verstappen in qualifying, and to finish second by also less than a second um, is pretty impressive. Uh, Leclerc finished third, he was about seven, eight seconds behind. Piastri fourth, as we mentioned, he had the three-place grip penalty. He would have started second. Uh, Carlos Sainz finished fifth. Lewis Hamilton sixth. Like I said, Mercedes had a bit of an eh weekend, as uh, Dan's asked here if I think Charles Leclerc will win any races. Uh, it'll take a bit of luck, I think, and another Max Verstappen DNF, I think, for, for any Ferrari again to win. I hope Leclerc wins, because it's been a while. Pretty sure his last win was... Oof, was it Bahrain last? No, with the first round of the new regulations? Um, I believe that was the first win. Or last win, I should say, not first. 
Um, yeah, Mercedes had a bit of an eh weekend, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with Lewis next year uh, in Imola for his first race in the uh, in the Ferrari. Thanks for the likes as well, by the way, guys. That's come through. We are live on TikTok if you're unaware. Um, Russell finished in P7, who was complaining to Lewis about not running the uh, <laughs> center tribute lap. Um, this is a Lewis was on his uh, little e-scooter there, trundling around in the wet while other drivers ran. Uh, Sergio Perez, we mentioned before, he had a, yeah, not a good weekend. And uh, I fear for his future at Red Bull, to be honest, if he continues to perform the way he did. Had a few incidences, went off, um, no pace in qualifying, had all qualified 11th. Did not too bad to get to 8th, but... Um, yeah, wasn't very good. Um, surprisingly, Lance Stroll actually finished in ninth, scoring the only point, f sorry, only points for Aston Martin as Alonso had a weekend to forget. He had a crash in one of the practice sessions, um, which set him back a fair bit. Apparently, they had a bunch of um, upgrades for the uh, weekend, which obviously did not go to plan. Uh, comment coming here, where do you reckon Carlos Sainz will go next year? I think it'll be Sauber slash Audi. I've heard they've got the most money to offer him. And I think that uh, Mercedes want to focus on having Kimi Antonelli in their future and not Carlos Sainz. We'll see. I think Audi's got the most money to burn. Um, and it seems like that uh, Bottas may be headed to Williams again. We'll see. Anyway. Um, last point scorer was uh, Yuki Tsunoda, who's having a pretty consistent year, I must admit. Um, yeah, I must admit, like, he's, what, finished in the points for the majority of the races, and most of them have been 10th place, was it 10th place finishes, um, interestingly enough. Uh, Dan's asking me my opinion on Pierre Gasly. Uh, never should have left AlphaTauri. That's my opinion. <laughs> Ever since he's gone to Alpine, it's been downhill and look I don't think he's terrible I don't think he's top tier um Pierre Gasly but I think he still deserves to be in F1 he got pretty like mistreated at Red Bull but unless your name's Max Verstappen or Sebastian Vettel who hasn't um yeah anyway I think that he's just there really I don't think any of Pierre Gasly, and um, we'll get to him in a minute. Um, the Haas team had a pretty okay weekend. Obviously, their expectations are points toward the back end of the top 10, and unfortunately, neither of them will uh, uh, were able to get that this weekend, sorry. Uh, Hulkenberg and Magnussen finishing 11th and 12th. Standard lives will hopefully continue next week. Stay tuned. Eh? Yeah? What are you talking about, Dan? Standard lives will hopefully continue. Oh, standard lives. Yes, sorry. Daniel, unfortunately, is not able to attend this week. And he's just writing for our viewers in the comments. I'll leave, leave him to it. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo, unfortunately, has finished um, 13th on Sunday. It wasn't a great race for him. Uh, he did well in qualifying, you know, qualified ninth. We thought some points were, were going to be possible for the RB team. And obviously, Sonoda got one, but Ricardo, don't know what happened. Uh, not much coverage of him as well, but they had a bit of a poor start. Uh, I believe the, couple, the both of them dropped a couple of positions. Um, and then from there, it just died. Nothing happened. Um, so, yeah, we'll see if he can uh, improve for... Probably his favourite track in Monaco. Obviously, it wasn't there last year for it. And the year before was uh, at McLaren, where I think he had his worst ever result. He like, finished like 15th or something. So, let's hope for some improvements on that. Um, first of the Alpine finishes is Esteban Ocon in 14th. Uh, unfortunately, I believe he got a point in Miami. Definitely one in China. Um... So Alpine slowly uh, getting back up the field. 
Uh, speaking of not getting up the field is Sauber and uh, Joe Gwen Yu is the highest points finisher in uh, 15th. Dan's asking me, is Scott McLaughlin the GOAT? Well, he might be after this weekend. Um, qualifying first for the Indy 500 and breaking the uh, speed record. So congratulations to him and he's on my wall in the background. Uh, yeah, bit of a biased fan on my end. <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking of Pierre Gasly, he uh, finished uh, 16th in this race. The typical stuff for uh, Alpine, he started 15th, so didn't improve at all. Uh, Logan Sargent finished 17th for Williams. Um, he wasn't classified in the uh, qualifying session. I'm actually not sure why, but uh, finishing 17th in there. And I'm pretty sure Valtteri Bottas had an issue as well. That caused him to finish 18th. And then um, Alonso was 19th, and he had a very weird race. At one point, his brakes were on fire. Uh, he did a well, more than a one stop, which did not work at all. Um, same for Alex Albon, who unfortunately didn't finish and finished last. Um, although he, he had another issue where his tyre went flying off the car in the pit lane, which so no, it wasn't in the pit lane. Um, he discovered it a couple corners later. Um, but you saw in the replay that the front right tyre mechanic went to go try to put the gun back on the wheel and, uh, yeah, didn't end very well. Causing a, another DNF. I think the best. I think the best part of Albon's weekend was um, signing his new contract extension. And after this weekend, probably questioning him that. Anyway, uh, hopefully the twenty twenty six regulations uh, prove a, another opportunity for Williams to get back up the grid. Who knows? Uh, yeah, back to Alonso real quick. Yeah, he had a really weak, really weird weekend. He, uh, yeah, like I said, Aston Martin brought in some. Upgrades that turned out to not be upgrades by the looks of it. They spent millions, sorry, Lawrence spent millions um, on <laughs> upgrades for the team. And once again, it uh, hasn't really paid off. Bryce has joined. Uh, yeah, you missed the start. That's okay. No worries. Um, coming toward the end of the the results here for the race. I was just mentioning everyone's name and um, how they went. Um, if you have any questions or feedback on the race, feel free to mention that, Bryce, if you did tune in. Uh, the driver of the day was uh, awarded to Lando Norris, and I believe he's won um, three of those in a row. Uh, Lucas has commented in what race is this. Uh, this is the Imola race for the Formula One that happened a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, so Leonard Norris won three driver of the day. So that means he won the China one. He obviously won in Miami. Um, and yeah, this weekend. So let's see if he can get a fourth. I don't know if there's a record for consecutive driver of the days. Maybe someone in the comments will uh, fill me in. Yeah, Bryce was saying the race was boring to the last 10 laps. Yeah, pretty much. I said that before when uh, Norris gave us hope. That he could win back to back. Thanks, Lucas, for the uh, like as well on the video. Uh, fastest lap, interestingly, did not go to a Red Bull. It did not go to a McLaren or a Ferrari. It went to Mercedes driver uh, George Russell. I almost said Lewis Hamilton. George Russell with a one eighteen point five on lap fifty four um, won the fastest lap award, the DHL award for the week. Um, yeah, the notes I got here, real, real quick, um, pretty much touched on all of them already. The one-stop strategy was the way to go for the, uh, for the race. You know, you can pick between having started on the medium or the hards, but everyone started on the mediums as a majority. I believe only Sergio Perez, uh, didn't. And, um, yeah, kind of paid the price for that. Oh, like, not really, actually. He finished 8th from... 11th, so it wasn't too bad. He did the alternate strategy to everyone else, and I think uh, Alonso and Albon were the only two that did a two stop strategy and that did not go well at all. Um, Joe, Bryce's uh, commented about the George Russell fastest lap. He pitted on new tyres 
and then he was angry that Lewis Hamilton didn't let him back through. That's fair. That's fair. Um, what else did I have here? Yeah, pro struggle, boring for 50 laps. Yep, yeah, RB no pace. But it was just nice to see that McLaren have further closed the gap to Red Bull and a genuine threat now, I think. Um, it's nice to see that they've done this after round... What round is it? Six? Yeah. Six? Seven. Seven. I've lost track. Anyway. Um, instead of having it at Silverstone, where they only were competitive for the last half of last year, it's good to see that they've closed the gap nice and early. Ooh. Apologies, it's been a long day. Oh, hang on. Yes, the news. I have mentioned this as James says, hello, hello, welcome, James. Um, yeah, Bryce has just reminded me, thank you, um, of the McLaren livery for this weekend. If you haven't seen it, it is a Bruno, no, Bruno, oh my God, Ayrton Senna inspired uh, livery, which uh, has the Brazilian flag colors and obviously mimics the helmet that Ayrton Senna famously wore. Uh, Oscar Piastri has also wore, has got a designed helmet for the occasion. Lando Norris hasn't quite, I don't think he's uh, released his helmet yet. Um, probably going to be Ant Senna related. I don't know why I have been some Bruno in my head. Anyway, um, yeah, it's not the red and white inspired livery that we all expected that Sebastian Vettel showed off over the weekend. Um, Actually, if they had him there in Monaco as well, that would be cool. Just saying. Um, nothing's been said about that, but that'd be cool. Um, yeah. I like the livery. It's not what I expected at all. Uh, considering the merchandise that they released was based off the red and white car, I was a, I was a bit surprised about this. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Apologies. Um, needed another coffee. Um, yeah, Lando's not posted, uh, our associate Bryce, <laughs> I'm gonna call him, has, uh, kindly, uh, told me about, um, now I'm a bit surprised about the liver out, I wasn't disappointed, obviously, because Anton Senna's legacy deserves to be celebrated at the track where he was unbelievable, uh, being Monaco, and we'll talk about Monaco, actually, now a little bit. We don't do F1 preview videos on the channel, so we usually talk about it at the end of a review. Um, I'll uh, do some predictions in a minute, but yeah, back to the livery. It's um, very striking. It's very yellow, uh, which is, yeah, good. Um, I do like the look of it, and I think that if they can do the team proud, I'd be, I'd be interested to see if... Oh, actually, I just thought of this. I wonder if they're going to have different race suits. Race suits um, and the crew. I wonder if they're going to have new suits. Hmm. Don't know. A um, few comments have come in at the moment. Lucas is asking they saw something about Koenigsegg coming to Formula 1. Is it true? I personally haven't heard of that, but I know a lot of manufacturers are interested. Obviously, F1 has the right to say yes or no. And Andretti has also tried to get in a couple of times. So, they've been rejected. So, Koenig's there coming in, I would say, is unlikely. But don't hold me to that. And Bryce has mentioned that the Marlboro livery probably wasn't allowed because of the cigarette branding. Yeah, true. And I don't think it would have the Marlboro on it. I think it would, they would have their own sponsors, but just have the color scheme and design of the old Marlboro livery. Uh, kind of like those renders that someone politely made on social media that went viral and, oh my God, I fell in love with. So I was a little bit disappointed that that didn't, um, that that didn't actually happen, just like we were disappointed with the Ferrari Miami livery. Anyway, I will move on. Uh, yeah, let's go to Monaco real quick. Um, I wish I was actually going to Monaco, but oh well, stuck in Adelaide. Um, look, it's really hard to predict who's going to win in Formula 1 these days because Max Verstappen is so dominant. Um, I recall last year he wasn't too dominant there as uh, Sergio Perez got the win. 
um, if I am not corrected. Uh, I believe Verstappen did finish on the podium, but I think uh, didn't I didn't mean, get the results up actually because quite interested. Um, before that, I'll make my predictions. I do think that Max will win again, but if he doesn't, I think definitely one of the McLaren boys can do it, and I hope they do do it personally. Um, so yeah, let's see. I think I really think Piastri has a good chance. I really do think that um, he has, yeah, a really good chance to get his first win. I don't know why I have this feeling, but I do. Oh, sorry, yeah, Max did win. It was the year before Sergio won because it was in the rain. Yes, no, that's true. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Oh, Ocon came third last year. Yeah, wow. Unbelievable. Thanks, Lucas. Um, appreciate the viewership nonetheless. Have a good night. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was the... Uh, Year before that, uh, Perez must have won. Or is it? Yeah, year before. Anyway, yeah, Max won last year. I did uh, forget about that. Oops. It was Alonso that came second. Yeah, that's right. Because Alonso had the great start of the year last year before something happened. Um, so. Yeah, I really do think that a McLaren can win. I have a really good feeling. McLaren last year had Lando and Oscar finish 9th and 10th. So, hmm. Uh, Jake's asking me, have I got a simulator set up behind me? I do. It's got a basketball on it, but um, I do. Yes. Check out Slipstream Autosport for the team that I race for, who also... Uh, produce this uh, podcast. I've helped us out with that. Um, Bryce has come in and said last year Monaco was the best because the rain came in halfway through and Stroll crashed twice. <laughs> well, Stroll doesn't need rain to crash, let's be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, it is what it is. Um, yeah, on the same lap too. Yeah, I remember that. that was quite comical. What did he end up finishing? Oh, he didn't finish. DNF. Great. Um, Dan's asked a bit of an unrelated question. The best NBA team going around, I think the best team going around is Boston and Minnesota and Dallas. To be honest, I have no idea who's going to win the championship. I, myself, am a Houston Rockets fan. Um, it's polished all over the wall in front of me. That wall's for racing. This wall's for basketball. Um, so, yeah, massive Houston Rockets fan myself. Um, anyway, um, yeah, going on to some predictions. I think, I really hope Ricardo can get some points. I think he, he needs them to stay alive in Formula 1 because once that summer break comes, he's past the Miami deadline. I don't know how. Um, I worry about his future after, or before Silverstone, whenever the winter break is. I think Liam Lawson is ready to pounce. Um... If you watch on TikTok, this will be related to this pod, not for the listeners, unfortunately. Bryce has asked, which track is in the middle behind me? Uh, Nürburgring. Yeah, I had to, to double-check that. I've got, actually, Monaco up there on the... Hang on, let me try to point to these. Okay. Monaco? Monaco? This way. Sebring? Uh... Albert Park, over there. My God, this is not working. Let's just do that there, that'll work. That is Imola, I believe. No, that one is Imola, Nürburgring. That is, oh, Bathurst. That's Adelaide, that's Suzuka, and that's Spa. Yeah, there you go, that's all of them. <laughs> uh, anyway. Back to some um, predictions for next week. I haven't written these down. I will after, though. Um, yeah, I think Ricardo needs to get some points, I think. I'd like to say Ferrari could be up there as well. Um, obviously, these are all predictions if Verstappen just doesn't dominate and win, which is hardly likely. Um, I have a weird feeling that one of these Salbers can get a point. I don't know why. I just feel like they deserve it. Um, Albon could also be really good. 
He's usually pretty good around. Uh, Monaco, Stroll will crash. <laughs> um, let's see how the Mercedes do. No one's talked about Mercedes all year because they're just there. They're usually 6th, 7th, 8th or 9th. Um, obviously, yeah, as Bryce has just mentioned, the qualifying is really important. Um, so whoever qualifies pole will most likely win. Um, so yeah, unless you're Daniel Ricciardo and get screwed by pit stop or Valtteri Bottas, um, then you've got a pretty good shot of winning from pole. So Saturday will determine most of it. Um, Dan suggested that Stroll and Sargent would be in a battle for last and Stroll will crash out. I like your thinking, Dan. That is a very good suggestion. And I'll write that down after this is done. You have a really weird feeling that one of the... Um... Actually, I might even throw an Alpine to maybe get a point. Like I said, last year they were really good. Stroll, uh, Ocon finished third. And where did Gasly finish? Come on, computer. And Gasly was seventh. Obviously, they were in better cars last year, but, you know, that was the best result they had all year, uh, I think. So, yeah, Ocon can definitely be up there. Their qualifying was really good if I'm not correct. Oh, no, fourth and seventh. Nothing too, nothing really different. Uh, anyway, a few more uh, comments coming in. Bryce is keen to see a Porsche Super Cup around Monaco. Oh, it's insane how they race those cars with such little error at all compared to F1 cars around Monaco. And I remember George uh, Jorge Lorenzo. I don't know if he's still in the Porsche Super Cup, but he was there last year. And I was like, what the hell? I did not expect him there. Uh, Dan is saying Pierre's going to win the race. Okay. He said, definitely not fanboying. I'm suggesting uh, that Pierre, uh, Pierre is Dan's favourite driver. Um, just going to take, take a guess. Anyway, I think we're going to start to wrap up this... Uh, well, now it's like a Monaco preview, but it was meant to be an Imola uh, review of the yeah, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix over the weekend. Hang on a second. Is Sam Shaheen in Super Cup? No, I have to Google this. Are you serious? Is he actually? I'm not gonna lie, I kinda hate him. Oh my god, he is too. So Sam Shaheen is gonna be racing around Monaco. Oh, that is. He also won the Imola 6 out. Wait, no, hang on, no, no, sorry, Spa. Spa race, not Imola. Are you serious? The guy couldn't even race in Porsche Cup. Okay, I'm getting off topic. Oh my god. Wow. That's caught me by surprise. Anyway. <laughs> um... Yeah, and uh, Dennis confirmed that he does like Pierre Gasly. Yeah, fair enough. Well, in that, I'm going to quote Jeremy Clarkson. Uh, after that bombshell, it's going to be time to... Uh... Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm thinking of Yasser Shahin. Look, they're both annoying. Anyway, yeah, on that bombshell, I'm going to start to end this uh, podcast. Um, obviously, go follow Let's Talk Motorsport on all of our socials across social media. Uh, I myself, my personal Instagram is there. Um, chuck me a follow if you want to wish. Or message me about the pod. I'm always welcome to F1, Supercar, or apparently Porsche Cup uh, <laughs> uh, questions. So feel free to message me if you want. Um, the next podcast that you'll be hearing from me would be the review of Monaco, I guess. Uh, also, on uh, Monday, we're going to be live on radio. I'm oh, sorry, not live on radio. Recorded on radio. Uh, at the uh, Radio Italiana that'll be airing on Tuesday next week. Um, yeah, that'll be it for this uh, for this um, this pod. Um, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Bye.